third day. Don't want to bore the you knows off you. So um, anyway, today we're gonna just come on a little bit early. So just waiting for a few folk to come on. Yeah, I think it's live. Oh, I'll wait for somebody to come on. Something going funny with my phone there. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, I hope this takes. I am on a few minutes early, so I just get to give people a chance to come on live and say hello. So if you're out there, jump on and say hello so I know that you're there. I'm going to make a spicy prawn curry today. Um, with uh, king prawns. Oh, good. Someone's come on, so I know <laughs> I know I'm live. I do say three o'clock, but I like to come on a couple minutes early just to make sure everybody gets a chance to hop on and say hi. So I've been sharing a few of my Indian dishes with you of late. <clears throat> my most recent one was um, <clears throat> excuse me, frog in my throat, a frog in my throat. Um, my most recent one the other day was the crispy onion badgies or pakora, you can call them as well. They're kind of similar type uh, Indian snack foods. And um, I was some time ago, I said that I was going to do who's on here. Hi, Pam. Good to see you. Uh, some time ago, I did say on my Mary's Kitchen page that I was going to do a series on uh, curry food. And I never... Um, got a chance to getting around to do it until now. So now is as good as time as any. Hi, Kylie. Hey, Jacqueline, nice to see you. Great, that's my friend in Florida, Jax. Can't wait to see you again soon. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> we got a beautiful day here. So it's really, so I don't even need this little jacket on, but I just keep it on just in case it gets a little windy or something. And hi, Sandy. And Mary, good to see you girls. Well, what I've been trying to do is bring Mary's Kitchen in, into your homes and um, bring the cooking classes into your homes just to, in times when you're all in lockdown, and I just thought it would be something fun and interesting to do. So I am tend to be concentrating more on the curries at the moment. So I did the crispy onion badgies the other day, and today we're going to do a really, really simple spicy prawn curry. So who's on here? Marina, hi. And Julie, <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful morning today. Kathy, how are you? And Fiona, great. <clears throat> how are you girls all doing, hanging in there? What's the weather like in Florida just now? Hi, Erin. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, as you know, I have my little induction cooker here, which I like to use. And curries are one of my favorite, favorite, favorite foods. Um, hey Lisa, hi, and Marina, <laughs> hey Susan Pace, how are you, you're still in shutdown, are you, and Wendy, hi there, also it gives me a chance to say hello to all of you in your, uh, wherever you are sitting in your home at the moment, so it's nice that you all come on and say hello, I love it, I'd like to see where you all are from too, there's Erin, she's from Calgary, and Fiona Milton Keynes. Oh, it's 82 and humid. Kathy, I didn't think I needed to hear that. <laughs> I am joking. Wonderful. It's always good when the weather's better. Hi, Sandy. Oh, you're allergic to shellfish. Don't worry. The basics of this recipe, you could add some chicken meat into here, okay? But I'm using king prawns today because I uh, just wanted to switch around on the diet a little bit. I've not been... Uh, usually just concentrating on one meal around five o'clock or something like that and just little tiny snacks at lunchtime because I'm not doing too much activity. I am walking the dogs, but hi, Tracy, Heather. Oh, Tracy, how are you? Nice to see you from Canada. One of these days I'm going to get to see you in person, Tracy. I hope. Susan, how are you? There's my niece, Susan. Susan, did you see the picture I put on uh, Facebook just now of you and I when we were in the Kresge's photo booth fooling around <laughs> with Grandma? Oh, thank you very much, Tracy. I'm just taking my time here 
to start the rest of me just gives me a chance to say hello so anyway my manager Lucas in Edinburgh who looks after my guest house sends me a picture uh, Auntie M she just says hello Auntie M <laughs> just sent me a photograph of his two suitcases in the living room and I had the handle pulled up he had a hat on it and a pair of sunglasses and a sign that said Qatar Airways, Edinburgh to Las Vegas. So then he sends me another message. He just says, I'm going to go camping in the garden next week. So very funny, Lucas, if you're on here. I thought that was brilliant. You did give me a chuckle at that. Yeah, I bet we were all wishing we are going on our holidays, but that ain't going to happen anytime soon. So let's get on. There's quite a few of you on now. So we'll get started with our cooking. Good morning from Oregon. That's great, Janet. And Sally from Toronto. Hi, Sally. I think Tracy lives in Toronto, too. Do you girls ever get a chance to see each other? Anyway, I will get started here because I can just talk and talk and talk until my head falls off. <laughs> yes, hi, Susie. I see you. Thank you. You finally got on. <clears throat> you said you had a conference call today, but anyway, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is heat our pan up and just a medium heat. I can't really see in the sun. It's so bright today. It's so warm. It's absolutely beautiful. This is a non-stick salter pan that I use. It's really, really good. You actually don't have to put any oil or whatever you're normally cooking with in into it because it doesn't stick. Nothing sticks here. So I'm going to put about two tablespoons of melted coconut oil in there. I like to use coconut oil with my Indian food or ghee. I like to uh, usually use ghee when I'm cooking Indian food. Hi, Kathy and Barbara. Uh, yes, all our canceled plans, Kathy, are very heartbreaking. I'm supposed to go to Poland. Uh, well, first of all, I was supposed to go to Canada at the end of April for 10 days, um, which sadly has been obviously cancelled. And we were having a big school reunion over there, which was going to be wonderful. And then I was going to Poland with Lucas, my manager, because his it was his nephew's first communion. But they're rearranging it for maybe October, so I'll maybe still get a chance to go. So we're gonna, we chopped one, I chopped one red onion, it doesn't matter what color your onion is, okay? And I like to cut it diagonal. So I cut my onion so I can cut the pieces on a diagonal like a half moon shape. So we'll put that in here, I hope it doesn't spit at me. <laughs> I'll put all my dishes over here so you can see. This is fun, isn't it? I think you girls enjoy uh, me coming into your homes when I can. I, not every day, but I try. If I'm cooking something, I like last night I made a sausage casserole <clears throat> and I thought, well, I like to show you healthy dishes rather than my sausage and mash casserole, which was exceedingly good, by the way. Hi, Lucas. Oh, you're in Las Vegas already, Lucas. You got there. Good. Have you been to the Grand Canyon yet? <laughs> Hi, Lola. <laughs> Lucas, my manager, he's having a bit of a joke with me today. So he just told me he's in Las Vegas already. So just <clears throat> let your onions cook a little bit. It's nice using this kind of pan. This, uh, this is a salter pan, by the way. Uh, I'm not uh, selling salter pans or anything like that. I'm just saying it's one that I bought and I really, really like it. A friend of mine, um, Lynn Forrester, she uses Curtis Stone pans, which I kind of would like to um, invest in a set of his pans, actually, because I believe they're very, very good. The better your cookware, uh, the better your cooking. If you use cheap pans, things tend to stick and etc. As Lynn found out making bread rounds the other day. Hi, Michelle. How are you? And Jacqueline? From the Netherlands. <coughs> oh, it's sunny there too. Good. Hi, Les. How are you? That's my friend Les from Florida watching. Well, just sit back and enjoy, Les. I'm making a spicy prawn curry. <laughs> hi, Gail. Say hi to Gail for me, Les. Hi, Ann Donahue. How are you? 
So I'm just cut, cooking these onions first. So that's one onion only in there. The next thing that I'm going to put in here is I'm going to put, I've got three cloves of garlic cut up. I'm going to put that in. This is a, my dishes that I'm showing you to make are really, really simple things that you can make in one pan. As you see, when I'm cooking outside, welcome to my outside uh, kitchen. And that's uh, three cloves of garlic. And I try to make it as simple as possible for you because, uh, you know, you maybe can't get your hands on all sorts of ingredients, etc. Here is one inch of chopped ginger, ginger root, fresh ginger root. If you don't know what ginger root is, that's what it looks like, okay? And what you do is you peel it. So I just take about an inch of that and I've chopped it all up earlier so I don't have to waste time chopping while I'm on here. Put that in. So you start getting the real fragrance. I love ginger in food. You can also make a paste out of the garlic and ginger if you wanted to. I used to do that quite a lot, but now I like the more texture to the dish. What am I going to put in here next? Let's just wait a second. I've got uh, one red and one green chili already chopped up. I'm going to put them in next. There we go. See who's on here. Hey Cindy Delude, how are you? Miss Hula Hooper. Hi Aileen, how are you? Everything going all right? Over there in Falkirk? I hope you're okay. So this, I'm trying to do like kind of one pan cooking, but I'm kind of concentrating on curries of late. I'm gonna make a few vegetarian dishes uh, next week. Uh, one with uh, cauliflower and potato, which is called alu gobi. And I also wanna show you one of my Indian friends in the States told me I make the best, there's a bumblebee going around here, um, uh, Indian doll that she's ever had. And she's accustomed to Indian food. So here we go. I'm gonna put my spices in now. So let me just remember what I've got here. I've got one teaspoon of cumin seeds, and I've got one teaspoon of uh, coriander. I've got one teaspoon of chili, one teaspoon of turmeric, and I've got about a teaspoon of uh, cardamom and what to do is kind of break those okay because they got lovely fragrance inside them and those just all go right in there I measure everything out first which is also easier for you when you're cooking if you measure everything out oh thank you very much Aileen she said I'm looking very sunny today bringing the daffodils in, into Mary's kitchen today and, oh wow so of course I love cooking this kind of food because it's so delicious and it's so good for you so, so far, and it's healthy. And we've got one tin of tomatoes, just chopped tomatoes. I'm gonna put that in next. And I'm just gonna put a little drop of water to rub my pan out. There we go. Just to get a nice consistency there. I've also got some fresh coriander cut up. I'm only gonna put a little bit of this in first. And I put the because I like it when it's really, really nice and green. So I like to put some in while I'm cooking. There we go. So that's basically your sauce. How simple is that? I'm just gonna let that cook for a few minutes and see who's on here. Hi, Pamela Barge and Manon, how are you doing? And Star, how, how are you? And Mary Lynn, how are you doing? So this is your basic sauce. So it's really, really simple. Two tablespoons of coconut oil in there, one onion, three garlic cloves, about an inch of chopped ginger, one red chili and one green chili. And it doesn't matter what kind of chilies you use. If you want it really, really hot, then look for your ghost uh, chilies or your Carolina Reaper chilies. You know, those are much, much hotter. This, these chilies, that we tend to buy in the supermarket tend to be a bit mild, to be honest, for me, the mild. I'm gonna put a little pepper in here. I just want those flavors to infuse a little bit. <clears throat> a tin of tomatoes in there. Some fresh cilantro or coriander, we call it here. Now, what you could do here, if you wanted, you could put some uh, chopped up pineapple in here. You could also put some green, red, or yellow pepper if you wanted. You could put some courgette if you wanted to pad the dish out a little bit. 
So these are other vegetables that you can add into this mix. Also, you can make a great vegetarian curry just out of this mix by adding a mixture of vegetables. So, you, In fact, I think I might try that one day. Uh, you could add some peppers, some courgettes, you've got your onions, add some carrots in there, whatever vegetables you have on hand, some celery, and it'll make a wonderful vegetarian curry. And all you need is rice after that. i got a bumblebee after me. Mmm, smells delicious. I'm going to just have a little taste. Now, what I normally do, that's beautiful, what I normally like to do is I like to let this cook uh, for a little bit. I want another tip. These are some different, uh, some of you have made my sweet potato wrap, and that's what I would have eat with this curry. It's like a chapati, and it's just made with one cup of sweet potato and one cup of your desired flour. Mix them together, make equivalent number of balls, roll them out, and just uh, cook them in your nonstick pan on both sides until they've got little brown marks on them and they're ready. I'll tell you another tip that I sometimes do, mango chutney. I don't know whether you can all buy this or, let me just see. Sometimes I put one tablespoon of mango chutney in, which I'm going to do, or you could put fresh mango in there. If you wanted, you could cut up some fresh mango. And put, I'm just trying to give you all sorts of tips so you kind of think out of the box. And the last thing we're going to do, I'll just mix that mango in a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. You can see how colorful that is. Really, really colorful. Let's turn it down a little bit. I like the induction because it reacts really, really quick if it's getting too hot. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put 500 grams of king prawns in. All right, I normally let that cook for sort of 20 or 30 minutes just to infuse all the flavors, but I'm not going to today. It's not going to really matter. It's kind of like a stir fry. So, how's your holiday, Lucas, in Las Vegas? Is everything working out? You're doing some gambling over there? <laughs> Marin, thank you very much. Well, I know some of you have been waiting for me to make curry, and you don't want to cook these prawns too long. These are frozen, uh, defrosted prawns. You can buy them in a bag in any supermarket. If you have fresh ones, terrific, lovely. If you have fresh ones, that's wonderful. But uh, these times at the moment, I'm not able to get fresh prawns, so I had to buy some frozen ones. Just defrost them. You don't have to overcook these. Those prawns are already cooked. They've already been uh, deveined and stripped of their shells, etc. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some more coriander in there. In fact, I'm going to put all of that coriander in there. Cilantro. There we go. So, could that be any easier? There you go. I'm just going to turn that off for a minute so I can see. Ah, Lucas, so when you get your prawns, uh, you went to get a bag of prawns, I know, the other day. You'll get a chance to make this. Yeah, add a can of chickpeas. Absolutely, Lisa. That's what I'm saying. It's a very, very versatile. First of all, getting the sauce together. You could turn this into a vegetarian curry. You could turn this into a chicken curry. You could, obviously, we're having prawn. You could even get fish. Lovely big pieces of, uh, like, fresh cod or something like that and put that in the sauce. It would be absolutely delicious. Serve with uh, some basmati rice or a rice of your choice, brown rice, whatever you like. Oh, so, okay. Oh, and you're having a good time gambling. Well done. Yes, just cook them in the same pan. Hi, Chris from Turkey. How are you? You always come on. Hi, Trish. You always come on and watch me, Chris. You're looking for some cooking tips over there. <laughs> and Bita, hi. Oh, you're going to make yours today. Good. Well, as you see, it's really, really an easy dish. I'm going to just cook it for five or ten minutes more. And wait a minute, I hear something. Tick tock, tick tock. Oh dear, I think it's wine o'clock. <laughs> anyway, girls, love you and leave you. Uh, I'll let you know what I'm going to be making next. It's probably going to be some kind of vegetarian dish. 
but I'll just leave you hanging and in a few days, maybe on Sunday, something like that. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you get a chance to, to um, oh, you're listening to the seagull, Cindy, I know. Well, that's why I like to sit outside here. So it's a great outdoors. Take, take your kids, you see my barbecue behind me. These are old fashioned barbecues that you still use the charcoal with, not one of those gas ones. <laughs> so great, great, Kathy. And Paula, nice to see you as well. Well, girls, as I said, it's TikTok, wine o'clock. Uh, I got to go off and uh, get myself uh, a little glass of wine. Have a wonderful day. And remember, if you see someone without a smile, give them yours. Thanks for coming on.